How to crochet the perfect stripes for your amigurumi. In this video, I'll teach you how to make the absolute perfect stripes while crocheting in the round. Normally, when doing color changes and making stripes, you end up with a very noticeable vertical seam indicating exactly where you changed colors. You'll also get this less than perfect horizontal line, where the tops of the previous round are showing through the next round. The following techniques are built to make the most seamless lines between rounds of color changes, both vertically and horizontally, making it a great technique for beanies or, my favorite, amigurumi. For this technique, all you'll need are two types of yarn and a crochet hook. And I'll be teaching you two different ways to do this. The first way is called the no cut join, which is the easiest method, but still a bit noticeable. The second is called the invisible join, which as the name suggests is practically invisible, though it takes a bit more work and leaves a lot more loose threads on the inside. If you'd like to read along with this tutorial and download the free PDF, click the link in the description below or visit clubcrochet.com slash stripes. Half color changes. Before I teach you the two techniques in order to truly make it the perfect stripe, you need to first know how to do half color changes with the single crochet. Without them, sure you can get a pretty seamless vertical join down the back, but you won't get a really clean horizontal line between the stripes. For a half color change, we're crocheting the top of the stitch in one color and the bottom in another. This can be used to make really detailed designs in your amigurumi, which I'll be discussing in a future video, but for now, here's how it's done. First, at the end of the last round in the previous color, in this case purple, you want to stop crocheting right before the last loop is pulled through. So you should have two loops on the hook. Now place a new color, green, in between the two loops and the connected yarn. Place your index finger of your non-dominant hand, for me that's my left, in between the two colors so that our second color, green, is now on the bottom. Now flip under so that your new color is on the top and pull through with your new color. Now flip around using the same technique in the same direction so that your first color, purple, is on the top. Insert your hook into the next stitch, yarn over with your first yarn, and pull through. Continue this technique switching colors so that the top of the stitch is green and the bottom is purple in each stitch around. Okay, now that you know how to do half color changes, let's move on to the techniques. The no cut join. This technique may not be as seamless as the invisible join, but it's a lot easier, and you don't need to cut the yarn so you won't have any annoying tail ends to weave in. Here we are at the end of a round of single crochet stitches, ready to start our color changes. Before you finish the round, make sure to lock in a strand of your second color by crocheting around it with the last stitch. For the no cut join, slip stitch into the next stitch. Now chain one using your new color. And single crochet into the same stitch that you slip stitched into. In this round, we're doing all half color changes. So when you make your single crochet stitches, make sure that the bottom of the stitch is your original color and the top is your new color. Make sure to count your stitches as you go around so you don't make too many stitches. This is something I've goofed up on in the past. At the end of the round, we'll do the same technique to connect to the first stitch. Slip stitch into the first stitch that you made. Chain one. This time I'm making the entire round in green, so I don't need to change colors. And begin single crocheting into each stitch, starting in the same stitch that you just slip stitched into. If you get to a round where the colors don't change, for example, if the next round were all green, then you don't need to do a slip stitch to connect. Just continue single crocheting in each stitch around like you normally would. Basically, all this is doing is making the end of the color changed round pulled downward to match the beginning of the round and to make it even. But it does leave this little indicator showing where this technique was done, making it less than perfect. There is a way to fix that though, which I'll tell you about in just a sec. Thanks for watching. We'll get back to the pattern in just a sec. If you like this video, please take some time to like and subscribe down below. 
And if you want to make sure you don't miss the next pattern, click that little bell icon or join the Club Crochet newsletter in the description below. And if you really like this content a lot, consider becoming a Club Crochet member. Members get early access to future content as well as access to the ever-growing Club Crochet library, a library of exclusive patterns and tutorials. Members even get kits mailed directly to their door with all the materials I use in each video. Plans start at only $5 a month. You can learn more at clubcrochet.com. All right, let's get back to the pattern. The invisible join. This technique is practically unnoticeable, but requires a bit more work than the no cut join because you have to cut the yarn after each round. When you're prepared for a color change, you have to first make a hidden end by cutting the yarn and pulling through. Then with either a needle or your crochet hook, go through the back of the second stitch from the hook with the tail. Then go back through the back loop of the last stitch made. This makes an end that mirrors the rest of the stitches around and gets you set up for a perfect color change. Now insert the hook into the hidden end that you just made and pull a loop through using the tail. Make a slip knot with the new color and chain one with it. Starting in the same stitch you just pulled the first loop through, single crochet in each stitch around, making half color changes all the way around so that your top of your stitch is your new color and the bottom is your previous color. You may need to pick up a strand of the original color depending on how long of an end that you left when you cut the yarn. You'll also likely have to untwist the yarn halfway through because of all the half color changes. When you get back around, you'll have to cut the yarn and make a hidden end again into the first half color change stitch. Then insert the crochet hook into the hidden end that you just made, pull the tail through, chain one, and single crochet all the way around in your new color. Now you'll have a perfect horizontal and vertical join around, and you can continue this technique again when you want to make another color change. The problem with this technique is that it leaves a lot of tail ends on the inside, and it's a bit annoying and time consuming to do, especially when you want to make a lot of stripes. That's why I personally prefer the no cut join because I'm lazy and I can deal with the fact that I'm not perfect. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please like and subscribe down below and click that little bell icon or join the email list at clubcrochet.com to get notified when I make new patterns and tutorials. And if you want to put this technique into practice, try making these bumblebees. The pattern for the worker bees, queen bee, and hive are available now with the Club Crochet membership or for purchase at clubcrochet.com bees. But if you're willing to wait, the worker bee pattern will be up for free on this YouTube channel in the next few weeks for non-members. Thanks again for watching, pasta la pizza, and happy hooking.